Okay, everybody, this is Dr. Cole. It's Sunday night, December 10th. More than likely, this will be my last video message of the term for the second eight weeks, fall 2023, for Political Science 1013. This is week eight. Uh, we're coming to the end of the term, everyone. You all will more than likely be seeing this on Monday morning, the 11th. Term papers are due Thursday, the 14th. And the final exam is scheduled is scheduled for Friday the 15th. So we have just a few days left in the term. Um, grades will be turned in no later than the end of the business day, Monday the 18th. Um, we have Unit 8 remaining. Uh, let me say just a few words about Unit 8 on Congress. Also, everyone... You have four articles to look at for the exam in addition to the class notes for Unit 7 and 8. Uh, please check and be sure you can access those articles so we don't have troubles at the last minute uh, on that. You have one uh, fairly lengthy overview of the Supreme Court as currently composed by Carlos Lazada in the New York Times. You have then three pieces about Congress. Two of them are about Speaker Mike Johnson. One about the process by which he became Speaker, the election that resulted in Mike Johnson becoming Speaker. And another from the Associated Press discussing uh, problems that Mike Johnson faces as he uh, enters his tenure as Speaker. Finally, we have a piece by Peggy Noonan from the Wall Street Journal about comportment and behavior or misbehavior on part, on part of members of Congress over the past few weeks. And uh, expect 10 to 15 items based on those four articles and the rest based on the class notes for Unit 7 and 8. Okay, everybody, Unit 8 is a lengthy set of class notes. Let me just try to uh, hit the highlights of it. Um, it would be a good idea for you to take a look at my Unit 8 links message and look at the website for Frank Lucas, whose district includes the Oklahoma Panhandle, and also the uh, site for the House Agriculture Committee on which Frank Lucas serves, although he's no longer the chair of that committee. So it would be helpful to you to go, to, uh, go through that and click on those links. Um, they're basically two sections to the class notes. They're divided roughly in half for Unit 8. In the first part, we're concerned with how members get elected, their record at getting reelected, and what kind of activities they engage in to uh, maintain their relations with their constituents. Uh, it's worth noting that Candidates, of course, and we're talking mostly here about the House of Representatives, are chosen in primaries. Um, in recent times, the primary almost has become more important than the general election because most seats are safe for members of one party or the other. So these days, the biggest fear many members have is of being primaried in their own party primary and being defeated so they would not appear on the general election ballot. Okay, and this often consists of uh, opposition from challengers who contend that the member, the incumbent member, has not been loyal enough to the party line for either the Democratic or the Republican Party. Be familiar with such terms as uh, casework and pork barrel. These are examples of things that activities that members engage in to perpetuate themselves in office and maintain their image with their constituents. Um, casework involves uh, a member's constituent soliciting help from that member because of a difficulty with one bureaucratic unit of the government or another. Uh, all members of the House are expected to perform constituent service. And for this reason, it's always good to know who your House member is 
if you should ever need to ask a member of the House to intervene with the federal government on your behalf. Uh, pork barrel can be considered uh, spending, uh, you might call it casework on a large scale, uh, spending programs that members see to it are included in the budget to benefit the constituents of that particular member in that member's own district. Um, so casework and pork barrel are among the ways that members perpetuate themselves in office. The track record of members of the House of Representatives in particular in running for re-election is very, very high. Normally, we expect 90% or, or so of those who run for re-election in the House of Representatives to get re-elected. There have been a number of reports of members who are retiring from the House of Representatives and will not be running for re-election in 2024. But of those who do, we expect that 90% or, so or so of them will get re-elected. Now then, the second part of the class notes deals with uh, members' activities in Washington, D.C., uh, in the halls of Congress, rather than with regard to their relations with their constituents. We go through the leadership positions in the House of Representatives, most importantly the speakership, which we know has just changed hands as of a few weeks ago when Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy of California was removed, and he's been replaced now by Mike Johnson of Louisiana. Okay, quite an unprecedented event to have taken place in the House of Representatives, but it illustrates the power that a small minority of members can have, especially with the House of Representatives so easily divided as it is now. A minority of members in either party could deny their speaker re-election because the House of Representatives is so easily divided. There are other leadership positions and also the committee and subcommittee system. We go through a list of the standing committees in the House of Representatives and the Senate, and we discuss the process of regular order by which a bill is introduced and goes through a subcommittee and then a full committee before going to the floor of the House and Senate. And then, of course, it must be passed in exactly the same form in the House and the Senate to become law. So a House-Senate conference committee may be necessary. But everyone, as I note in the class notes, Congress very often these days gets away from regular order because on matters like the budget, if they attempted to, to adhere to regular order, things would break down because Congress is so closely and barely divided these days. So instead of going through regular order, often material like the budget or a continuing resolution when we stop short of a full budget and we're just trying to kick the can down the road and fund the government for a few more weeks, that very often will be negotiated among the top leadership, perhaps in consultation with the White House. And the content of the bill will be agreed upon among the leadership and submitted directly to the floor of the House and Senate without going through regular order. Many members would like to get back to regular order for matters like the budget, but it's very, very difficult to do so because Congress is so evenly and bitterly divided. Now, we discuss such uh, topics as the filibuster, which is unique to the Senate and a unique feature of the Senate rules. We discuss the budget process, which is uh, the budget is a bill just like any other, but some of the processes, processes we go through to try to get the budget passed are unique to the budget. And furthermore, the record at getting the budget passed on time for the beginning of the fiscal year every October 1st has been very poor uh, for the past few years, for a couple of decades now, because of that divisiveness uh, between the two political parties in the halls of Congress. As we wind up the class notes, we talk about uh, the uh, views of Edmund Burke, great British statesman, on the role of the legislator. Be familiar with the terms trustee and delegate. And then everybody at the very end of the class notes, we try to offer a few remarks to wind up the course as a whole. Okay. All right. So those are some of the things that we tried to do in Unit 8. Your final exam will be over the class notes for Unit 7 and 8, plus, plus those four articles that we mentioned on Friday the 15th with term papers due for those students who are choosing to do one on Thursday the 14th. Uh, 
upload those papers, click on the link under Unit 8 in the module section. You'll see a link that says Term Papers. You can click on and you should be able to upload your paper there. Or if you wish, you may attach it to an email to me. All right. Just a moment. Logging back in. Okay then. So that uh, will pretty much do it for the second eight-week term for the fall of 2023. Uh, please contact me in case of any questions, problems, or issues through the course website or at david.co.opsu.edu. So, uh, happy holidays to all. I hope the eight-week term has been a beneficial experience to you that's opened your eyes to some of the things going on within our federal government. Please contact me in case of any problems or issues. Term papers are due Thursday. The final exam is open for 24 hours on Friday. Thanks a lot. Study hard. Take it easy. Happy holidays. And contact me if, if you please contact me if you need to. Thanks a lot.